In this video, we're gonna be building a custom ChatGPT chatbot using the brand new Turbo API. And we're gonna do so in two ways. First, we're gonna do it with bubble.io, no coding required. Second, we're gonna do it with Python. And it's super simple, it's just a few lines of code. I'll walk you through step by step. By the end of this video, you're gonna have your own ChatGPT model and you're gonna be able to show it to your friends, build on top of it. It's going to be incredible. Let's get into it. So let's get started building it with Python. You're gonna need two things. One, you're gonna need an API key from OpenAI. You'll just need to sign up and they'll provide it to you. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And the second thing is you're gonna need a Google account because we're gonna be building the Python version in Colab, which is a Google product and it just makes managing the Python packages in the environment much, much easier. So looking at the API docs, platform.openai.com slash docs slash introduction. The first thing that you need to do to get your API key is sign up with an OpenAI account. And once you do that, go to the API docs and I'm showing them here. Go to quick start and then build your application. Scroll down and you'll see add your API key. So I've already created a few. We can just go ahead and create a new one. I'll copy it. Next, we're gonna open up a new Colab notebook. And remember, you do need a Google account for this. So let's go ahead and name the file, ChatGPT underscore demo. This is Python language. And how this works is you have different segments of code that you can run. The first thing we're gonna do is install the two libraries that we need. First, OpenAI. So we do exclamation mark, which tells Colab that this is gonna be essentially a terminal command. So pip install open AI. And the second thing we're gonna install is Gradio, which is a, a way to really easily have a front end running without needing to actually code up a front end. So let's install it, pip install Gradio. And we can just start with those. Let's just make sure those two work. So we'll hit the play button. We'll wait while they install. And if it all works, we should see a green check mark. Okay, it's done. So we see the green check mark. It took 27 seconds to install. We'll close the output and now we're going to add a new code segment. And so here we're going to first import those two libraries. And next, we're going to set our API key. And so we should still have it saved to our clipboard. So let's go ahead and paste it. And there it is. And now let's define our first and really only function. So this is going to be called custom chat GPT. And this is what's going to interface with the chat GPT API. And it's going to take an input. That input is going to be the prompt. And so with the new Turbo API, this is called the chat completion endpoint, the main workhorse of the ChatGPT API. So let's go ahead and say completion is going to be equal to OpenAI, which, you know, we're getting this object from the library that we initialized. Chat com completion dot create. And we're gonna pass in the model and we're gonna be using the new model, which is 3.5 turbo. And the nice thing about this model is it's a 90% price reduction from their DaVinci model, which is the last version. Uh, really insane. I'm gonna put out another video about how revolutionary that price point really is. Next, we pass in an array called messages. Within that, we're gonna pass a hash with two key values, role, which is gonna be user, and content, which is gonna be the input. Okay, that all looks good. And so what the role is, is you have a, a couple options. Um, you can be the system. And so when you specify the role of system, you're essentially saying, hey, this is information just for ChatGPT. And you can pass it things like, and you can pass it things like, you're a helpful assistant, or you are a school librarian. You, you really can pass it anything, but you're essentially specifying the role that ChatGPT should be playing. And then content is the prompt itself. And so here, this is the role of user. We're gonna come down and we're gonna initialize a Gradio instance. So FE meaning front end, Gradio dot interface 
and we're going to define the function is equal to custom chat GPT with inputs of text and outputs of text. And then we launch it. Okay. And let's make sure that these are indented properly. And after this function is complete, we are going to return completion dot choices message content. And so when you hit the chat completion API endpoint, let's look at what we're going to get back in return. So here's an example response ID object created, but the main part of the payload that we're going to be needing is this choices array. And within that messages and then the content itself, which is going to be the response. So that's what we are getting right here. So let's run it. And the nice thing about Colab is it automatically detects that we needed a local host running, pops it open, and here we go. Have a nice little interface. So tell me a joke, submit. Why did the tomato turn red? Because it saw the salad dressing. Uh, so that's it. Within minutes, we have it, our own version of ChatGPT running and we can only extend it and make it more awesome from here. Okay, so the second way we're gonna be building this is using bubble.io, which I just started using, but it's really, it's dead simple. No code required. The only thing you're gonna need is a bubble.io account and it's free to test out and you're also gonna need the ChatGPT API key. So remember to keep that. So let's go ahead, let's create an app. It's gonna be ChatGPT demo and we'll make sure we can actually get it. Create app. We don't need the setup assistant. You can go ahead and close all of this. But what we will need to do first is actually go into plugins. To connect to an external API, we need to install a plugin. It's very easy. Come here. It's the first thing in the list, this API connector, and you just click install. And what we're going to do once we do that is click add another API. And let's call this ChatGPT Turbo Authentication. We're going to do a private key in the header. Don't really need to know what that means. Just select it. And so that key value is going to be authorization, which it already has there. And then you're going to type bearer, which is just a, a common convention. And then let's paste in our API key that starts with SK dash. And for the development key value, we're going to put the same thing. And we're going to use a shared header. Once you click add a shared header, we're going to type out content dash type and value is gonna be application slash JSON. And we're gonna give it a name. This is the chat, oops, expand, sorry. We're gonna type chat completion. We're gonna use this as an action so that we can use it in our workflows. Data type JSON. It's going to be a post and I've already copied the URL. So here it is, HTTPS colon slash slash API dot open AI dot com slash V1 slash chat, which is the new version slash completions. So body type is going to be JSON. And here, all you really need to know is, and I'll put this in the description below. And so you just paste this little JSON in here. So this is pretty straightforward. The only thing that you really have to note is that right here, we're actually putting in a dynamic value. If you wanted to just say, tell me a joke, you could, but we want to be able to pass that in with an input field. So we'll use that key there. And the value is going to be tell me a joke. That's going to be the placeholder value. And we don't want it to be private. Remember to unselect that. So let's go ahead and initialize the call. And it worked. So this is the JSON payload structure that we got back. We can see the raw data here. Again, you don't really need to worry about any of this. If it looks like what it does on my screen, you, you got it working. So we'll click Save. And we're done here. So next, click on over to Design. Now that we have the API set up, we're going to need a few things on the page. 
we're going to need a text input box somewhere to actually type the prompt. We're gonna need a submit button, a way for the user to tell us, hey, I'm done typing, go ahead and give me the response. And then we need a place to actually display the response. So let's put those three things on this page. So first, let's go down and we'll grab a multi-line input box, drop it right there, make it a little bit bigger. We'll leave it as type here, but we're gonna rename it to be prompt goes here. Then we need a button. Let's come over here. We'll grab a little button, drop it there, and we'll say submit prompt and button submit prompt. That's a fine name for it. And then let's grab a text field and drop it in somewhere to display the response. And we don't need any uh, default text there. Now I'm not gonna spend time making it look great. I just wanna get it functional and feel free to make it look great in any way you like. The next thing we need to do is set up the workflows. So to do that, let's click the submit prompt button and we're gonna start edit a workflow. And it automatically creates a workflow that when the button submit prompt is clicked. So then we're gonna add an action. We're gonna come down to plugins and we're gonna grab that API call that we created. Click that. Rather than it being just tell me a joke, we want to take whatever the user types in the input box. So let's click insert dynamic data. And we're gonna grab the prompt goes here. And we're gonna grab its value. So let's close that. So once we have that, let's hop back over to design. And we're gonna need to name this text box something. So go ahead, double click it and we'll put response goes here. Close it, hop back over to workflow. Now we're gonna add a second step to that workflow. So we click here, element actions and set state, which is really just a way to save the data that we're getting. So we'll go to response goes here, create a new custom state, we'll call it response, and it's gonna be a text response, create, and the value is going to be the result of step one. So if you think about it, step one is taking the prompt and sending it to ChatGPT's API. And then we're gonna get a response back from that API in the form of the actual completion, the, the response to the prompt. So we click here and we want the result of step one's choices so now choices where that comes from is it actually comes from the json response that we're getting back to. json is just a data structure and we're just telling it hey within this data that we get back here's the thing that we actually need you don't really need to know about how it works just uh, follow along so we're going to say choices and we're going to say each item's message content first item, and then we can close it. And so we're saying we're going to take the response, set it in the response goes here box, and that should work. The last thing we need to do is go back to design and we're going to double click this response box again. And we're going to tell it this is where we actually want that dynamic data. Click this dynamic data button, select response goes here, and we're going to want its response. Close that. And I think we're ready to preview. So there's our button, there's our input box. Let's test it out. Tell me a woman's name. Submit. And there it is, Emma. And if we click it again, and there we go, we get Anna. Click it again, we get Emily. Click it again, we get Isabella. Let's try something a little bit more complex. What are the first three amendments to the Constitution? So it looks like some of this response actually got cut off. So let's go fix that. Come right here and it's multi-line. So let's make it a little bit bigger. Preview and let's test it again. What are the first three amendments to the Constitution? And there we go the first three amendments. And that's it. You have a fully functional ChatGPT custom implementation that you built yourself. You can share it with friends and 
Play around with it. You can extend it. You can build full applications now that you know how. Pretty easy, right? If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.